Well, let's discuss now, and we're going to get reaction both on the e-tolls and the decision in the Ekuruleni Council today. We're joined by the Gauteng Premier, who doubles up as ANC chairperson. Premier Banyazale Sufi, good evening to you, and uh, thank you, you for your time. Good, happy, good, thank you. Happy Easter, uh, my brother. Wonderful to have you here in thank studio. So happy Easter to you too. Let's discuss the e-tolls first. How's the Gauteng government reacting to this announcement by the transport department? It has been a long road, uh, very painful, I must say, a difficult, tough negotiations. Uh, but we are pleased that finally, as we promised uh, when we tabled the state of the province address, that it also will be history. Uh, they are now finally history. Yeah. Uh, but it's not an easy decision, I must be honest, a costly decision. Uh, but I hope government and other uh, institutions will learn out of this uh, mishap and uh, ensure that we don't have a repeat uh, of this problem again. I want to pick up on the word you used, a costly decision. The Gauteng government will still have some financial obligation in order to pay off this debt. How much is that? It's almost 12 billion uh, uh, that we needed to, or we need to uh, pay back uh, to National Treasury, uh, something that we are willing to do. Um, but if you, you analyze it, and the reason why we felt that we should uh, uh, make this form of arrangement is that to date, uh, the principal debt is almost 47 billion fully. Uh, when these toll gates or e-tolls were up and running, uh, we've paid up to 21 billion on interest only, not on the principal amount. Um, and, and we felt that uh, we can't continue on that path uh, where we are just paying interest because people are boycotting these things. Um, and it's quite clear that there's no way that people start to pay. So uh, we can't be satisfied that uh, we are spending this amount of money on interest. So that is why we entered the space as routing and said, let's clear the principal debt and we are prepared to pay the portion that we need to pay which is 30%, and the uh, national government will pay the remaining 70%, and then we'll take the money and rehabilitate our roads and expand other new roads because roads are key in the development of economy of any uh, province. So in the absence of that, uh, we could not uh, expand. Every morning you see the car congestion, uh, our highways are literally parking based purely because this decision was outstanding. And now that this decision has been taken, will then channel our resources in ensuring that we broaden our roads and build new roads. There is a view that as big a victory this is, certainly the ANC in Gauteng sees it that way. There are those, of course, who are saying that this is in a big part as a result of public resistance to the system because of the lack of consultation. Are there lessons to be drawn there? From government. I don't want to underestimate that part or undervalue it uh, or ignore it. Uh, it's a combination of many things. Uh, but what I can tell you, that public place around would have not yielded the results that uh, we are celebrating today. We had to go there and lobby and debate and discuss it. Not on the basis of public pleasure, but as I said, on the basis of the prudent utilization of our resources. Uh, if you're going to play, pay 21 billion rands on interest and the principal amount remains the same, uh, um, I mean, logic dictates that you'll need to take a certain decision. Uh, but surely we can't underestimate that uh, society registered their views. Uh, we can't underestimate that we're institutions that uh, raised their own views on this matter. So where we stand as the ANC, where we stand as government, uh, we are proud that finally We've de uh, delivered on something that Dumsey has said we can't do. Uh, the same organizations that are, <laughs> uh, are today saying they are celebrating, they said we don't have the power and the mandate as provincial government to, inter to enter the space. Uh, they even said, uh, when I delivered the state of the province, uh, that uh, it's a pie in the sky, it's not going to happen. We said from the 31st of March, here we are, two days or three days before the 31st of March, this thing is done and dusted. The credibility of government here, Mr. Lusufi, is of utmost importance because if people are going to stand up against a system that government sought to implement and there is resistance against it, it means that slowly but surely the authority 
moral authority of government uh, comes into question and whether or not government can make decisions that the people that it claims to serve are happy to live with. How much of that is a worry, not just for the province of Gauteng, but at national? I know you speak for the mm. province of Gauteng, but this is a credibility issue for government. I you doubt. Agree? I doubt though, that if, uh, fundamentally. Uh, should the government be deaf to the needs of our people? Uh, if people raise these objections and views, uh, uh, should you say, <laughs> because I want to be seen to be a firm government, a government that is not bulldozed, I'll ignore them? Or you need a government that listens to people? Or you need a government that is sympathetic to the views of the people? Uh, this particular program has taught us one thing. Uh, that consultation must not be underestimated. And when you consult, you must consult meaningfully. And when you consult and before you implement a certain program, we must ensure that uh, indeed all necessary stakeholders are on board. I would not agree with you uh, that on the basis that uh, this was unsuccessful, it means therefore government uh, 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 credibility is at stake. Uh, surely not. Actually, government has reaffirmed this democratic stance that where democracy dictates that listen to our people, you must listen to them. Uh, no matter how long it took us, uh, because you have to be convinced, you have to be persuaded. Uh, no matter that they may have been uh, persuaded at the last hour uh, when uh, facts were presented to us. But the reality is that those that started this process, uh, especially Premier David Makura, um, uh, uh, former MEC Sputla Ramukhopa and many other people that were part of the initial team that was working on this particular matter. Uh, we need to celebrate with them and appreciate what they've done and the role that they've played. But I stand very firm that government must listen to its people. Government must participate in consultation meaningfully. But most importantly, we need to take decisions that are economically viable so that the economy of our country can prosper. You may not agree with the view that this is a credibility issue for government, but perhaps those who are going to raise it sharply yep. when government goes outside and says, we are trying to implement a certain project, can you lend us money? I can tell you that in the capital markets, there is going to be a challenge for the South African government because here is an example that will stand out to say we can't trust you when it comes to you coming to us to borrow money because when you are going to then come and say we are settling this earlier than we would have wanted to remember they want to make money out of interest and so you cutting that short that process short there is a problem there not necessarily did you default no uh, did you abandon the debt? No. Are we settling the debt? Yes. Are we settling it within the acceptable timelines? Yes. Uh, are we going to benefit as a country out of the settlement of this particular transaction? Yes. I don't think that one project, amongst many other projects, I mean, you are going to the market now for the how drain expansion. The demand is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking to expand uh, 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 our train services to, to go to Limpopo. The demand is huge. We are trying to recapitalize our offices uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in the CBD of Johannesburg as part of rebuilding Johannesburg. The demand is huge. I don't think it has tempered the market, but obviously uh, uh, the manner in which uh, uh, this matter was handled, uh, you can't say there were no jittery uh, feelings by those that have invested in this particular project. But our agreements are very strong. They can stand the test of time and they can go to court if they feel dissatisfied. But what they've done thus far, we've demonstrated high level of respect to agreements, mm -hmm. but most importantly, the need for us to move forward when we face challenges that uh, South Africans feel that they can't support the decision that they've taken as government. Let's talk Eguruleni. The mayor is gone, Mr. William Godwana. Why did the ANC choose to abstain from the vote? But we can't enter a battle that is not ours. It's as simple as that. You can't interpret it, that is not ours. The AIC feels betrayed. You have heard him say that the AIC will have to review its uh, arrangements. <laughs> with that would be unfortunate for you because we didn't vote for any motion to abstain. They depended uh, on your vote. 
Well, it will be really unfortunate for them to depend on the vote when they've not lobbied us. Uh, I lead the negotiations. Uh, I lead the discussion on this particular matter. I don't remember AIC <laughs> lobbying us, either to support them or to deal with uh, this matter in a different way. Uh, as the African National Congress, we are tired of being used. Uh, uh, let us be clear. Uh, we really believe that uh, people must know and see that in the absence of the African National Congress, there's no governance. Uh, that the last time the African National Congress governed that municipality, that one municipality received clean audits, that municipality had positive uh, rent, uh, uh, ratings uh, from people that are, uh, are dealing with uh, ratings, that municipality was servicing our people. And we thought uh, when we entered in this government of local uh, uh, unity with the parties that are running Ekurlin, we thought that we'd be on the side of the people ensuring that service delivery is attended to and that that municipality can go. But people who are in partnership with us run that municipality without consulting us, run that municipality without briefing us. We don't even have a joint program of action to say as a collective, this is what we want to achieve in this municipality. It's only when there is a motion uh, that people want to talk to us, want to consult us, and want to lobby us to do this. It does not work that way. If there was uh, never a joint, I'm sorry to cut in, yeah. if there was never a joint collective program of action, someone is asking, what was the logic of actually supporting this government as the ANC, particularly because you have the majority numbers in that council? Why did you not put yourselves up as the people that are going to lead as your uh, amendment recently uh, to this motion that we saw passing today seemed to suggest that the party with the biggest numbers must be the one that stands up to lead in a mayoral role, for example. Totally. There are 11 uh, municipalities in Gauteng. Hmm. Uh, after the local government elections, uh, we lost 10 as the African National Congress uh, of the municipalities. Out of 11, we lost 10. And we took our opposition benches without any worry, any concern. Johannesburg was gone. Ekurlen was gone. Tswane was gone. Mukhale was gone. I can go on and on and on. Um, and we took our position benches. Um, those that went to bed uh, with the DA or HNSA are the ones that came back to us to say, we have realized that in the absence of the African National Congress, there can't be governance. And they lobbied us to establish government. Of the 11 municipalities that uh, uh, we lost, uh, nine came back uh, through this arrangement. Mm -hmm. uh, and the nine municipalities that came back through this arrangement are functioning very well except the municipality of Ekurulene. Uh, so in all other municipalities, uh, let me say uh, seven of the municipalities uh, will get consulted, we plan together, uh, work together. But in Ekurulene, you have a political party that does not have the majority that behaves that it has majority. It wants to dictate terms. When things are good, it's them. When they are bad, it's others. When they are part of that government. Uh, and that's what led to this motion of uh, no confidence. So on the basis of that, we felt that let's abstain because we are not involved. Uh, let's abstain because we are not consulted. Let's abstain because we have not been lobbied. Let's abstain because we have not been asked uh, either to support uh, this motion or not. So now that the motion has gone through, I've seen our inbox are flooded <laughs> uh, by people that want to do things the right way consult us, uh, negotiate with us, update us, and uh, from now on then we'll take their calls and hopefully uh, they've learned out of this uh, a, a quagmire that they've created. From now on, what will be the posture of, no, the, ANC, got, got of the ANC in cooperating with the EFF? I'm being specific or direct for a reason. We are running that municipality with many other organizations, not with the EFF alone. Mm -hmm. um, there is a Super 7, it's a UDM, PAC, uh, AIC, and many other political parties, including the EFF, you are right. But what we are saying, if you are part of government, respect all partners of that government. Ensure that you plan together. When you adjust the budget, ensure that you consult everyone to adjust the budget. You can't say I run the portfolio of finance and then I adjust the budget the way I want without consulting the people that assist you for that budget to be voted into. You can't. It does not work that way. And that is why so, I'm asking you, Mr. Yes. Indesufi, whether this is a lesson for the ANC 
in cooperating with the EFF into the future? I doubt it's a lesson for the ANC. It's the lesson for the other parties. That if you have a partner, respect that partner. Even in social life, if you have a partner, you respect that partner. Here, we feel undermined. We felt that we were not consulted. And that is why Action SA took advantage of the situation and tabled the motion. Parties have learned, and we are willing to engage with them. We are willing to still continue with this partnership. We are willing to engage with them. But if you don't respect the African National Congress, gone are those days that you think we can abuse the African National Congress. We are not disparate for power. We have taken our opposition benches. We are ready to take our opposition benches. But if you have government of local unity and you don't treat the ANC very well and you don't respect the ANC, those days are over. You can't abuse us because we think that uh, we are disparate for power. We are prepared question. to take whatever decision that will be in the best interest of the African National Congress. Final question, and I'd like a direct answer. Later. I know your, <laughs> your strength as a former <laughs> spin doctor. Is the ANC prepared to cooperate with the EFF going into the future? Anytime. Not only with the EFF. Whoever wants to cooperate with the ANC, we are ready to cooperate. Uh, our framework is very clear. We will work with any other, any other political party. As long as you believe in non-racialism, you acknowledge the history of our country, and you acknowledge the importance of ensuring that we accelerate service delivery. So if the EFF is willing to work with us, we are. Any other political party that is willing to work with the ANC will be ready to do so, as long as you respect us, and as long as you ensure that if we are in partnership, we must be consulted, and we must be part of the decisions that we are going to take collective. Any other thing outside that, I see is it, see ANC. Parting shot, how confident are you that you are going to retain the province of Gauteng post May 29? Well, we are, uh, obviously, uh, you are quite aware that there are limitations and many other things that you need to rectify from load shading, crime, unemployment, and many other things. At this stage, uh, we are busy dealing and attending to those matters. When I've concluded with it, I'll come back to, to you and to indicate uh, where we stand. But where we are, we don't, I mean, this thing of coalitions and many other things is an indication. In the absence of the African National Congress, there's madness. In the absence of African National Congress, there can be a strong government that can run institutions of government. In the absence of the African National Congress, we are going down, down, down. And we don't want to be arrogant as the African National Congress. So we have learned from our mistakes. We have learned from the limitations and the issues people have raised. And we have rectified those particular matters. And on the 29th of May, there's only one formation, one organization, very giant, very big, and handsome. It's called the African National Congress. Payazle Sufi, let me thank you very much for your time. Gauteng Premier, also the chairperson of the African National Congress.